Welcome to the BioWhisperer channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of biomaterials where we will discuss biocompatibility and nanotoxicology associated with nanomaterials. European Commission states that the particle size of at least half of the particles in the number size distribution must measure 100 nanometers or below. The use of nanomaterials spans across various industries from environmental preservation and air purification and more recently in healthcare and medical applications. Nanomaterials are utilized within the medical or healthcare field with drug delivery as an example. Nanoparticles are being developed to assist the transportation of chemotherapy drugs directly to cancerous growths for instance. Advantages of nanomaterials includes the size which offer various different advantages compared to the bulk form of the materials, and their versatility in terms of the ability to tailor them for specific requirements accentuates their usefulness. An additional advantage is their high porosity, which again increases demand for their use in a multitude of industries. A biocompatible surface is that it cannot trigger an undesired response from the organism. Briefly it refers to the ability of a material to perform with an appropriate response for the stated application. A thorough biocompatibility testing program with in vivo and in vitro studies are needed for pre-clinical assessment of nanomaterials for use in biological applications. Guidelines are being drafted by leading bodies such as European Union on concerns from nanotoxicity risks where further evaluation of risk assessment is needed with procedures for safety evaluation. Taken together, being able to identify the properties, to understand the mechanisms by which nanomaterials interact with living systems is key to reviewing nanomaterial use in biocompatible applications. Pharmacokinetics and distribution of nanoparticles within the body depends on their surface physicochemical characteristics, shape and size. The circulatory flow of blood will be able to send the nanoparticles into various key organs and tissues. Serum proteins which are available in system circulation interacts with nanoparticles, retaining them in circulation or influencing their rate of cellular update accordingly. Though it is observed that larger nanoparticles tend to stay in the bloodstream. Given those considerations, it is important that defining a nanomaterial as a biocompatible material which generates no immune response is important for the drug delivery role. Clearance of nanoparticles is size and surface dependent. The liver mononuclear phagocytic system clears larger nanoparticles whilst renal excretion removes the smaller nanoparticles. Taken together, the evaluation of nanomaterials penetrance into cells and tissues, and the respective biodistribution, degradation, and excretion has to be taken into consideration. I would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and subscribe for future updates. With that out of the way, let's continue the discussion. More recently, new field in toxicology termed nanotoxicology has emerged aiming to study the nanomaterial effects deriving from their interaction with biological systems. In this review article, we see that the regulatory issues associated with nanomaterials usage has been gaining attention with its widespread applications. More importantly studies on the systemic tolerance levels and buildup within tissues are areas of focus due to possible nanotoxicity for the tissues and organs. Key attributes encompass the following which includes being soluble, adopting biopersistent high aspect ratio having passive nanomaterials without obvious biological effects or given active nanomaterials with surface-related specific toxic properties as a simplified classification. Other concerns we have to review when going for nanomaterial use in biomedical context includes biodegradability, which applies to the biodegradable nature of the nanomaterial in the human body. Biodegradable nanomaterials will be eliminated from the human body and should not stay around beyond its intended application. Route of administration and the biocompatibility surface are also being assessed. This is because even if we are using the same nanomaterials, when applied dermally or intravenously can pose different risks to the immune system. The third point is about scaling up biocompatible nanomaterial production in manufacturing batches where keeping consistency with processes like homogenization, sonication, milling, emulsification have to be properly assessed. 
Nanomedicine comprises both biological and non-biological medical products. The biological nanomedicines are obtained from biological sources, while non-biological are mentioned as non-biological complex drugs, NBCD, where the active principle consists of different synthetic structures. It comes in different forms including nanoemulsions and nanocomplexes. Regulatory guidelines and standardization across different countries are being formulated and criterion evaluated includes biodistribution, kinetic and toxicity considerations. We see more use of nanomedicines with surface coatings once approved to be in the market with reformulation of pre-existing medicines. The road ahead involves the need for creating of harmonized definitions in all Europe to the development of protocols for the characterization, evaluation and process control of nanomedicines. What nanotechnology has brought about in the past decade in medicines is improvements in toxicity, solubility and bioavailability profiles. We see a larger role for nanomaterials to be applied in nanomedicine for medical purposes in three different areas, in nanodiagnosis, in areas of controlled drug delivery, termed as nanotherapy, and in areas of regenerative medicine. See you soon in our next topic. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to this channel for future updates.